herzlich willkommen zur JAX 2010 hier in Mainz, der zehnten JAX dieses Jahr. Ich habe die Freude hier mit Jason Van Zell hier zu sitzen. Welcome Jason. Thank you. Switching to English now. So Jason, you're the founder of Sonotype, founder of uh, Maven. Yes. Uh, tell us something about yourself. You're as a founder. Are you still into the coding stuff or are you more in managing and organizing things these days? Um, so on the open source side, there's still a lot of work that I do with some of the other committers to organize the work uh, in Maven. Um, but uh, a large part of the oversight of the project itself is now handled by Brian Fox. Mm -hmm. So I'm no longer the PMC chair uh, for the project. So Brian Fox has taken over uh, a good chunk of that work. Um, as far as coding versus management, I still do a lot of the project management or the product management at Sonotype for a lot of the products. And I, I do a lot of the discussions about uh, business with a lot of the companies that we work with. Um, but I try and I try and at least do some coding every week so it actually stays somewhat fresh in my mind and yeah. somewhat relevant. But um, I've been really lucky insofar as Maven is actually uh, Benjamin Bentman, who's a young German fellow who's a Maven committer and now an employee of Sonotype, has actually done uh, at least 50% of the work on Maven 3. So I've been fortunate enough that I don't have to worry about the coding all the time. We have good people um, who can take care of it. But I enjoy both and I try and keep a balance between both. So, and I hope it remains that way. Um, and to that end, uh, our new CEO starts in June. So he'll remain nameless until we announce him on June 1st. But um, he, he's an amazing guy and it will mean that I can actually focus more on the open source side. So I'm looking forward to that in June and staying home for the summer and actually coding for the whole summer. Okay. So you said Maven 3, that's the hot topic of these days. Um, what are your personal highlights from the feature set of Maven 3? So lots of people have asked this question and I think for me the, the highlight is, which is probably not very exciting to a lot of people, is that everyone from Maven 2 can move forward to Maven 3 and they actually won't notice any change whatsoever. So we've gone to great lengths to make sure that everything is compatible. Um, we're finding a few little problems here and there since we released the beta a few days ago. Um, but the, the plugin APIs are the same, the artifact resolution is the same, the palm format hasn't changed. Um, all the underlying uh, infrastructure changes that we want for new features are there so that we can expose them in 3.1. Um, but we didn't want to uh, change the way everything worked in Maven while changing a major version, while trying to move the community forward on a new version. So really, for me, the amazing part of it was making it compatible, as well as um, Stuart McCullough, who is uh, one of our employees who's been working on getting Maven to work with Juice. Um, has actually been able to do that and that will probably make it into the 3.0. So it's not so much the user visible changes um, that are amazing, it's actually that we managed to make it compatible while changing all of the internals while flipping the whole system over to Juice and the average user won't be able to tell the difference whatsoever. So the, n the new features that I think people will be looking for will come out in Maven 3.1 and I think that will be sort of the you know, the marketing features that will be exciting for people. Okay. So it's the infrastructure that's changed in 3.0. Um, super stable, it's faster, um, and it should just work for people. Great. Um, what about the Polyglot Maven, a new thing? What can you describe a bit of it? Sure. So there's been, I would say, select interest in Polyglot Maven. I've been asking the question to uh, people in all the conferences and all the jugs that I've gone to for the last 18 months. So I usually ask the, the audience, you know, who, who wants something other than an XML formatted palm um, and a different way to actually work with Maven. And surprisingly, when I started asking this question, it was usually two or three percent. And today I asked the same question in the talks that I had today. And there was probably two or three hundred people in the room, and only four hands went up. So I, I think it's a very interesting technology, but I think that uh, there is a, a disproportionate amount of 
um, credence given to everybody wanting to switch to dynamic languages. I think that uh, the, the reason we made Polyglot Maven was one, to experiment with new forms of Maven. Um, and I think the people who are making uh, build tools and dynamic languages are super capable. So you have, uh, you know, Gradle and Hands Doctor and, and Builder and those, the people who are working on that. Um, and they're super able developers. Um, and they can make build tools probably in a matter of days. Um, but what we're trying to do with Polyglot Maven, if there's any way we can actually convince those people who want to work with dynamic languages to use the infrastructure in Maven 3 and then put a dynamic language front end on it. Um, so it's not only to have uh, a different representation of the POM. So Polyglot Maven is not just about having a POM that's formatted in Groovy. Um, it's also allowing the dynamic languages access to Maven's internals. So it may rewire the life cycle. Um, it may change the way phases are decorated and how different actions are executed in Maven. So it's not, it's not part of Maven proper yet. It's still a separate project. And what we're concerned about most is interoperability. So if, if someone with a dynamic language uh, or put a dynamic language front end on Maven's core, but change the way the dependencies resolve or change the way the project works. Um, it's not something we may want in, in Maven proper. Um, so it's really an experiment that we started. Um, there's been a lot of interest in the Clojure support. That's probably the one that's had the most support so far. Um, the Groovy support is probably next. Okay. And then the Scala and Ruby support falls, fall behind those. Um, so it's been interesting the order in which people yeah. um, picked it up. Um, so it was only a week ago, someone in the Clojure community was using Lineagen, which is the build tool for uh, Clojure. Um, and he made a fully compatible, uh, something fully compatible with Lineagen, took the front end syntax for Lineagen and put it on Polyglot Maven. And it really only took him a few days to do that. So for me, that's what's interesting. If people can get what they want and leverage the infrastructure that exists there, uh, that's really what, what I would like to see with Polyglot Maven. Any, anything's possible technically with Polyglot Maven, but what ends up settling out and what ends up being used and if we can actually get the people who are working on some of the dynamic language build tools to use these, use Maven as a base instead of rewriting the whole tool, that's probably what I would like to see. Um, in your session today you said um, you moved to Git with nearly all projects, just Nexus is still at subversion. Yep. So why Git? Um, so for us, it's really one is the distributed model. I actually think it's far better than a centralized model, especially for open source. So I've seen some people argue that argue against that as a model for building a healthy community. But I really like the fact that someone can check out one of our repositories, that they can work on it locally, they can change everything they want using real version control. Um, and the people that I've interacted with to take patches to uh, some of our projects has been an order of magnitude easier using Git than trying to process patches um, in Jira or trying to like merge remote branches. It's just, um, I really believe the model that you get with Git that's fully distributed actually works better for collaborating with people. Um, we have developers all around the world. We have a couple developers uh, in China and we were having just transfer problems with Subversion just because it was so slow and we moved a couple of the projects over to Git and those problems went away. So just just the efficiency that's inside Git is incredible. Um, trying to merge and branch in Git I find a lot easier than trying to do in Subversion. I, As I said in the talk today, I, I've really forgotten how to do merging and branching in Subversion and I really don't ever want to have to remember again. Um, there, we still, Maven is still in a subversion repository. Um, I've been trying to get uh, Maven into a Git repository and there are a couple other people at Apache who are trying to get canonical Git repositories, but we, we seem to be having some, some problems there trying to get that to move forward. Um, and the other huge factor for us is that there's a Java implementation. Um, so there is Garrett, which is a code review tool that was written by Sean Pierce. Mm -hmm. um, he's also the author of JGit. Um, and it's a Garrett instance that the Android team is actually using for their canonical source code repository, which is 
pretty amazing. I mean, they have a lot of people working on it. It's cloned out to other uh, Git repositories, which are C-based. Um, but it works fine for that team for developing it. And that it's in Java means it's, for me, it's the last piece of the puzzle where you could actually provision an entire development system uh, in Java. So it was really, um, there's almost everything else exists, like issue trackers and wikis um, and Hudson for continuous integration and Nexus for repository manager. All those systems are already in Java. And with having the last and final system in Java means you know, an enterprise could actually provision everything using a JVM, and I, I think that's an amazing thing. Perfect. Thank you very much for the interview. Enjoy your time at JAX. Thank you. See you soon. Okay.